Good afternoon, everyone. A look at the sporer minimum summer and winter temperatures across Europe, starting to mimic that again. U.S. prints more money in one month than the last two centuries. Massive inflation inbound. Chicago Mercantile Exchange revises upward. All agricultural and cattle price limits. Arctic outbreak inbound 40 degree Fahrenheit below normal temperatures right over the hard red winter wheat production areas that were just planted. And strange cirrus clouds appearing in the skies. A new study found websites shared over 100 trillion pieces of personal data last year. This data was taken off websites, apps, and personal browsers like the one you might be on now, used for advertising purposes in real-time bidding systems. I don't like being spied on by advertisers, which is why I use Virtual Shield. You can head over to virtualshield.com and in the download tab, I'm going to choose Firefox. And click install now to add the Virtual Shield add-on. It's just that easy. And get started with your free 30-day trial. Install it, click connect. You'll see the shield turn from red to green. And you'll see how from my initial service provider, I was able to even change my IP virtual shield network protected. And Virtual Shield continues to offer its loyal customers a whopping 50% off all plans for life to help save costs during this unprecedented crisis the nation is facing. The link's in the description box below. Starting off here with the Arctic air outbreak for those of you in the U.S., Canada, and Mexico. Frigid cold temperatures... This off severe weather EU, looking at that leading edge coming down into Texas, 40 degrees below normal temperatures. And you'll see a variance of anywhere up 38, 40, 42 degrees below the normal. And that's going to continue all the way through the first week of November. Now, what's most interesting is if you look where the hard red winter wheat production is, it's directly over the Gulf region that was just planted as the fields were harvested for one crop and planted for another. This exceptional cold, I wonder how that's going to affect the planting as the grass is emerging. Wheat grass, barley grass, rye grass. And jumping over to tropical tidbits, this is in Celsius. This chart here all the way through November 1st. Those purples looking around 12 to 16 degrees Celsius, which is well into the 27, 28 degree Fahrenheit range when you're going to do the conversion. So it looks like that extreme cold is going to stick around for quite some time. And as we march into November, it's just going to continue to cool from there after that warm front blasts through. It's another Arctic front just behind it. And Europe also expecting massive cold front and look what's preceding it. Poland. What about these cirrus clouds? Haven't ever seen anything like this in my sky watching days being a fan of tracking geoengineering. This is indeed heavenly, if you will. A veil over the sky. I'm wondering what this would look like in a sunset. Because this grand solar minimum that we're heading into through solar cycle 25 and solar cycle 26, the eddy minimum. But we can also bump back into the 1650s and do some history research. See how society changed, how the economy changed, how food prices moved up and down. But then we're going to jump back into the sporer minimum. Even one grand solar minimum further back than that. 1430s, a period of extraordinary internal climate variability. This chart's pretty self-explanatory, easy to read here. The mean temperatures are just the averages. You have the annual for the entire year. And in the center column, you have December, January, February. And on the right, you have summer, June, July, August. Now that's the averages, the mean. So what happened during this time from say 1430s up to around 1500, you had this dip in temperature over the whole annual. Now, you got to realize, when they say mean temperature, they're talking from 850 A.D. to 1850, which is a 1,000 years of temperature records in Europe as the baseline. December, January, February, much cooler. But look at the summer, warmer than average. June, July, August, it's the warmest year ever, even in one of the most intense grand solar minimums. Well, there was a lot of volcanic aerosols. And different tectonic activity happening during this sporer minimum that did not happen during the maunder minimum. So you can see that there were more volcanic eruptions, more ash in the atmosphere. That's why it was so much more intense. 
And this chart here, a little bit messy. It's broken down into summer temperatures, winter temperatures, and the precipitation by all the dots or the locations that these measurements were taken in Europe. So let's go a little bit more granular. I took the time and split the chart apart so it'd be easier to read. So the black dashes are the area and time of study during this specific 1430 to 1440 period. And the dots that you see on the map on the left, the colored dots match up with the lines there in the temperatures and then the location on the European map with the numbers. So everything can match up pretty cleanly there. What you notice though, the winter temperatures, very much colder than normal. This chart goes all the way down to three degrees Celsius below normal and three degrees above normal Celsius which is gonna put us around uh, seven to eight degrees Fahrenheit. But I'd also like you to look at the Maunder minimum right at that 1650 mark. Now you notice cold, 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 and that's right up around the English Channel there, south and east of England into the French coast. But then what happened? There's a massive warmth during the winter. Heat record broken in the winter time. And we come over to the summer temperatures, you'll start to see the same thing where the summer was above average because you notice the coloration is more into the oranges, 1430 to 1440. But then when we jump over to say 1650, 1660, right in the modern minimum, what do you see? Hot, hot, hot. Even three degrees Celsius above. Because if we had a three C above normal temperature, it would be on the front page of every newspaper. Record heat. But it happens during grand solar minimums. It's not just all about cold. It's about the precipitation and how long the winter lasts into and keeping the ground colder into the planting season in spring. Summer precipitation, anywhere you see a dark red box is massive flooding, fungus, hard to grow, just like we're seeing over in Europe right now. Guess where? France and Germany match up perfectly with this chart and map right here. And that top line 13 is right in Southwest England and they're getting flooded and they've had some real absurd wetness in this last year and a half to two years matches up specifically with this perfectly. So will this Eddie Grand Solar Minimum be the same as a Sporer or the Maunder Minimum? No. It's going to be different, but it's going to rhyme. We're going to see the same climate anomalies. We're going to see the same shrinking growing seasons as the ground stays cooler, longer, delaying planting. And then as we're seeing in the United States, early blizzards coming in, early frosts and freezes, damaging, stunting growth, reducing crop yields. And what's interesting is through every grand solar minimum, there's always a re, I should say, shuffling of the economy. It takes a different form. Food prices skyrocket, the economy collapses and then reemerges as something different. Right on cue, the U.S. printed more money in one month than in two centuries. From 1776 to 1979, all that money that the U.S. ever printed, the equivalent in one single month due to stimulus relief. And here's the interesting thing. Forecast for the U.S. to continue stimulus relief printing into 2021, 22, 23, $4 trillion per year from now on moving through the next 20 years. And if you look back through history, how people preserve their wealth, generally gold, silver, and now we have crypto, something new that's emerged. Just like every grand solar minimum, new technologies emerge, new systems emerge. Crypto would be right on cue for another emergence of something to help us get through and solve these problems. And I like how Pantera Capital broke it down. So use your own world around you that you're seeing. Look out until the schools, the daycares, and the economy gets back into some sort of normalcy we saw in 2018-19. Money is going to continuously be printed. So you have to ask yourself, do you think we're going to slow the money printing or increase the money printing? Because if you say increase, you're going to understand why the CME group for the second time this year has reset their price limits for grain, oil, seed, lumber, and cattle futures. Now, the news release was out. They're still awaiting the new finalized numbers coming up here, which will be released on November 2nd. So the news release is out now. We got to wait to get the new PDF with the updated numbers from May. Now, back in May, they did the first update. Two updates in a year. This is unheard of. They used to do it once every four, maybe once every five years prior. But now they're doing it twice in one year. They're expecting upward prices. And this is where all the revisions are going up and up and up. Anywhere from, say, 25 to 75% up. So the daily stops won't hit. And it's going to give a lot more buffer into these food price rises. So live cattle futures from $0.03 cents to $0.04 cents a pound. That's a 25% increase. And then feeder cattle from four and a half to five cents a pound. But then if they're looking at some of the updated numbers, which they're envisioning for this newest update, that's going to bring it up to seven and a half cents a pound. 
So we've gone from four and a half cents a pound to seven and a half cents a pound just in this single year. And what they're saying now is the price based is going to be a reset annually, which means upward revision every single year. So the CME is already looking for incredible food price rises. And I'm going to take you through the chart here that the PDF, I've linked everything in the description box below. I hope you chase down the leads because everything's dovetailing right now in terms of history. Corn futures were 25 cents a bushel. The new expanded upward limit was 40 cents a bushel. And then what's going to be released November 2nd is going to push that even further. Analysis are putting at 65 cents. So you're telling me that last year is 25 cents and we're going to 65 cents. That's more than doubling what is happening with the expected price rises and volatility. So the limit stops won't be hit during days on huge fluctuations in trade. So they're expecting massive, I mean gargantuan food price rises here. Black Sea corn, completely in a different continent, way over in Europe. $35 a ton, up to $52 a ton, and they're looking at around $63 or $65 a ton on the next increase. Soybean futures, 60 cents a bushel, then a 90 cents. Now they're looking at $1.20 coming up. More than doubling. So what is the envision? Your food prices are going to more than double. They're already pricing it in here in the futures market on how much things can move. Take this as a huge crystal ball on what's going to happen with our economy, inflation, availability of foods, contract delivery of foods, and the price of foods. Even many futures are hitting the same thing. Hard red winter wheat. You know, that massive Arctic front coming down, that wheat grass is going to have a very difficult time surviving if it's emerged. And in the southern areas around Texas and whatever, they're into that rotational crop row. It's emerging. If over here in Tennessee, they're already putting the rye out and the rye grass is coming up, you know the winter wheat grass is up. 35 cents a bushel up to 60 cents. And then we see it sunflower oil, 145 up to 220. And we'll jump over here to Australia, same thing. If it's not just limited to the EU, it's not just limited to North America, United States, and our markets here, the CME, it's down in Australia as well. $50 a metric ton to $75. See, it's a global thing. They're all being priced in right now for the markets to absorb higher food prices, higher volatility, and bigger swings. So take into consideration here the soybean oil futures. If that moved more than that two cents a pound... That would hit a limit stop, and they'd have to stop trading for the day. Now they changed to $0.03, cents, and the newest revision is going to be $0.05, cents, more than doubling that. So that's a huge buffer in the swings in price. So the oat futures, this is real interesting. Oats are like canaries in the coal mine. They're so susceptible to changes. So when you see oats being damaged across the planet, oat prices rising. And if you go in and you look in a supermarket, see how much those Quaker oats are costing you these days compared to if you had any prices or knew anything about the price back in 2018. Massive increases in oat futures because they're the canary plant species in the coal mine, if you will. And look at this. What they're expecting is 50 cents a bushel on the oat movement, up from 20 cents. That's more than doubling. So to put it in context, the markets are pricing in an average not extreme volatility or fluctuate. Average this year and next. Rice going up to $1.70. So how prepared are you for disruptions in the supply chain? Increases. Whether you take advantage of My Patriot Supply, the two-week or the four-week emergency food supplies, you need to get ready to store some of your own food. If you're going to do it on your own, you're going to look for something you can store for a long time. Go to your local co-op. You can buy 50-pound bags of peas, beans, wheat, millet. And please remember, if you get the hard red winter wheat in a 50 pound bag, it's non-GMO and you can grind that for your own flour. Now go to the store and try to do that. A one pound bag is going to be several dollars, but a 50 pound bag is right around $14 right now. So there's massive gains by going where the farmers are shopping for the seeds, quote unquote seeds, which is your food, beans. They can be turned into microgreens. You can cook them in soups, but Buy it in a 50-pound bulk bag. Right now, the Adzuki beans that I bought, $36 for 50 pounds. Go into the store. I looked at Adzuki beans. They were $3 a pound. So by going to the bulk buy and understanding that you can store that in tubs and buckets, learn how to get the heat sealer and seal some of your own foods in the Mylar packs like My Patriot Supply does. If you're going to do it on your own, you certainly can, but you need to start right now. Seriously, you need to get it in order. 
Or if you don't have the means to do that, or you don't know how, and you don't want to buy the equipment too, that's already pre-ready made for you right here. The link's in the description box below. I wish you the best in your preparations, because if the CME is pricing this in, we're starting to see massive money printing and shifts in the economy, and we're also seeing the same types of climate matchups in these grand solar minimums. This is a fingerprint of change through history in cycles. It's here again. I do thank you for watching. Hope you got something out of the video, and I'll see you next time.